Hey guys, Andy Robertson here with CQ Academy and I'm super excited for another video here. This is actually the third video in a three-part series on how to effectively prepare for the CQ exam. The first two videos, if you missed them, the first one was on active retrieval or active recall. This is essentially just recalling information from memory in the form of like a practice exam or flashcards. The second video was all about spaced practice or spaced repetition. If you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. Today's video is on another, another study technique and this is really important. It's called interleaved practice or I'll often call it mixed practice. And let me show you a quote from the research about mixed practice. Interleaved practice has been shown to have relatively dramatic effects on students' learning and retention of mathematical skills. Now, the reason I want to share that quote with you is because whether you're preparing for the CQ exam or the green belt exam or the black belt exam, you know, statistics is a huge part of the body of knowledge. Not only, especially on the CQ exam, not only does it make up the largest portion of the exam, it's also the hardest, most complex set of topics on the exam. And so this particular skill applies directly to statistics, which is where a lot of people struggle when they prepare for the CQ exam. So I specifically wanted to share this with you to help you with statistics. By the way, stick around to the end of the video because I want to give you another free resource to help you prepare for the CQ exam. This is a 40 question mixed practice exam specific to statistics to help you take advantage of everything I'm about to share with you today. Okay, so, so to help explain this idea, let me give Give you an example from the research. Let's say you were attempting to learn how to calculate the geometry of a really complex geometric solid like a spheroid or a circular wedge or a spherical cone or a half cone, some really complex piece of, of geometry. There's kind of two different ways that you could learn and practice how to calculate that geometry. And this is exactly an experiment that, that a group of researchers performed. And so essentially what they did to, to study the most effective technique is they put students into two different groups. And the first group is called blocked practice. Now what does that mean? They took the first geometric solid, let's call it a spheroid, and on day one they had the students practice questions on solving geometries specific to the spheroid. They blocked practice for that geometry. And then on day two, they moved to the second geometric solid. Maybe it was the spherical cone or the half cone, whatever it was. So day two was, again, blocked practice specific to one geometric solid. Same on day three, same on day four. Now the next group of students engaged in what's called mixed practice. So on day one, they took practice problems or they worked practice problems that included questions from all four geometric solids. They did that again on day two, on day three, and day four. And the beauty of the way this, uh, this was structured is in total, the students worked the exact same number of questions. In fact, they worked the exact same questions just in different sequences. So the first group was completely blocked by the different uh, type of solid and the other group was mixed. And let's look at what happened when these two groups of students were given a test one week later that was all mixed up. And by the way, when I say mixed, I mean just random, right? Any particular geometric solid. And, and the reason that's important for you is because the CQ exam is mixed. You have no idea what question is gonna be given to you. And so these results, you know, can kind of directly translate to the CQ exam. I think it's really interesting that when they were actually working the practice problems, the people who were engaged in block practice did better than the group engaged in mixed practice. I think that's a really interesting result and, I want, and I'm gonna come back to that in a second. But then if you look at the final exam results that they took a week later, it's clear that the folks who mixed up their practice did much, much better. In fact, they did 40 points better. Think about that in terms of the CQ exam. What if a small change you made to the way you were practicing improved your results by 40 percentage points? That's a great example of, of the fact that the way you prepare is often more important than actually what you're studying in and of itself. You want to be really cognizant about the, the study method and the study process that you choose because clearly it has a big impact on your outcome. Now I want to use the research to explain why mixed practice works. So let me read you some of the research. Mixed practice improves your ability to discriminate between concepts and improves your success in a later test or in real world settings where you must discern the kind of problem you're trying to solve in order to apply the correct solution. This is so incredibly important for the CQ exam. Uh, the CQ exam is mixed. You have no idea what problem it is you're trying to solve. 
And so the, the first step in solving any problem is discerning what type of problem it is that you're solving and then applying the correct solution or the, the correct equation. You know, the, the, the case in point here, the CQ exam is open book. ASQ gives you every equation in the book and they give you access to every concept. They don't care if you can work an equation. What they're testing you on is whether or not you can discern what tool it is that you need to use in the right situation. In fact, I give you every equation on the CQ exam. Go to cqacademy.com slash free cheat sheet and I will give you every single equation on the exam. You can bring it into the exam with you. That's not what matters. What truly matters on the exam is your ability to discern between various concepts and apply the correct solution to the problem you're being given. And that's true in real life too. When your boss hands you a problem, you don't know what type of problem it is. And the first thing you have to do is quickly discern what type of problem it is that you're solving. And that's why I think mixed practice is so incredibly important, not just for your preparation for the CQ exam because I want you to pass, but more importantly, I want you to apply what you're using and grow your career and be more successful. So that's why it matters even more than simply just passing the exam. Here's another quote from a, from a fantastic book called Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. When you're adept at extracting the underlying principles or rules that differentiate types of problems, you're more successful at picking the right solution in unfamiliar situations. The CQE exam is an unfamiliar situation. You have no idea what question's coming every question is gonna be brand new. And so if you wanna discern the right solution, you should be engaging in mixed practice while you're preparing so that on exam day, you're ready. Here's another quote from another researcher who says, interleaved practice helps students to discriminate between different kinds of problems so that they will be more likely to use the correct solution method for each one. This is, this is what you need. In fact, this is what people struggle with the most in statistics. I'll give you a great example. In statistics, oftentimes we're asked to solve for the probability of certain types of data. And, and let's use the discrete data for example. Uh, the binomial and the Poisson distribution are very similar. They're both used for discrete data, they're both used to solve probability, and when you read those problems for, that require those, those solutions, it can be hard to discern which probability equation you have to use. The variables you're given are similar, the types of problems are very similar, and some people make the mistake of, you know, they study the binomial distribution one day and they work a bunch of practice problems. They study the Poisson distribution the next day, they work a bunch of practice problems. But because they never mixed that practice and they never, they never practiced discerning between the two, when they get into the exam and a random question pops up, they struggle because they never practiced learning when it was right and wrong to use which, which probability distribution. And the other question that, that I think about when I see this or that, that I've been asked in the past is, well, Andy, why aren't people using this more? And, and I think there's two reasons. The first is that a lot of resources out there for exam prep or whatever, are set up in a way that, that basically use block practice. If you buy a book that has you know questions at the end or if you buy a course that has questions associated with it, oftentimes those questions that you get are associated with that topic. Hey, today's lecture is gonna be on SPC and you're gonna get a quiz that's only related to SPC. Uh, by nature of the product that you purchase, the course or the material that you bought, you're inherently engaging in blocked practice. It's, it's essentially a function of the design of the, of the product that you're using. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is that it is a little harder. Let's go back to those results. If you look at the way people performed dur during their practice, you'll see that folks who engaged in blocked practice did better. And sometimes as a student, if you're engaging in mixed practice, it feels harder, you struggle more, you get more questions wrong, it's, it's a bit more frustrating, it requires a bit more effort. Uh, but of course that effort pays off in the long run. Whereas if you engage in blocked practice, here's what happens. You, you get more questions right, it feels easier, and essentially you get a feeling of mastery. Let me, let me quote the research here. Psychological research has indicated that strategies that make learning more difficult and effortful effectively enhance long-term retention. Most students use rather passive or ineffective strategies such as blocked practice, and these strategies make the learning process appear easier, which creates a feeling of fluency. As a result, students are overconfident about their long-term learning and overestimate their remembering, which has detrimental effects on the learning outcome. Essentially, when you engage in block practice, it feels easier. You feel like you're crushing it and that you're just knocking it out and that you, hey, you've really mastered that. 
when in reality you haven't. And that's why it has such a negative effect. But if you engage in mixed practice and you, you add that desirable difficulty, you make it a little bit harder, right? That effort pays off in, in the fact that you're building long-term memories and you're able to discern between similar concepts and, and, and choose the right equation when you're solving a problem. Okay, so what does this mean in terms of your preparation for the CQ exam? When you, especially around statistics, when you're preparing for statistics and studying and practicing, you should be taking practice exams that are mixed. Your practice exams should include questions from different uh, related topics that are similar in nature so that when you read that question, you don't necessarily know what type of problem it is or what equation it is that you have to use. Because that's step one in solving any problem is saying, hey, what type of problem am I solving, right? Let's discern between what concept are we being asked about and then let's work the equation and then let's solve the problem. And so when you, when you do that, you're, you're essentially practicing the way you play. I love that old adage. If you practice the way you play, you'll play the way you practice. And that has applications for the actual CQ exam, right? And it has applications for, for your day job. If you, if you practice in a mixed way, that on the exam, which is also a mixed, uh, mixed exam, you're gonna be successful because you practice that way. By the way, if you're interested in seeing what a, a mixed practice exam looks like, go to cqacademy.com slash mixed practice, sign up, and I will give you a free 40 question practice exam on statistics where all of the questions are completely mixed up. The CQ exam includes 36 questions related to statistics and I'm giving you a 40 question practice test to help you prepare, to help you see what it's gonna feel like on the CQ exam when every question that you get is completely mixed. And that's gonna help you practice and help you prepare, and it's gonna help you be successful on exam day. All right, that's it for today. I hope you really enjoyed this, and I hope you found it valuable. If you did, hit that like button down below so that other people who are on that CQE journey can find the same content. And if you want to, to make it through the CQE journey and pass that CQE exam, hit that subscribe button below. That way as I publish new content, you get, you get notified and you can stay on this journey and continue to learn and continue to grow and pass that CQ exam. All right, have a great day, bye.